and welcome back to Adobe Live on this wonderful Wednesday morning slash afternoon. My name is, oh, Tim, and I'm very grateful that you could once again join me on stream in the live chat, as always, because I am joined by the amazing audience of Adobe Live at home watching Maybe you're watching this live too, or maybe you're watching the replay. Either way, welcome. Thanks for, for tuning in. And before we get started, I would like to take a quick look at the, um, at the live chat. And in there we have, let's see. Well, first of all, where can you join us? Of course, on Behance, be.net slash Adobe Live. That's where I will be reading the live chat. That's where you can ask your questions. Uh, we'll just chat with the community. Um, right, so let me just open the chat real quick once again on my monitors. I'm watching the replay, Oliver. <laughs> okay, thanks. Hi from the past. Um, hi, Sean. I bet this is the new voice to action functions. Hmm, interesting. Uh, hi, Stefan. Martin. <laughs> Is this an automated hello to all Photoshop friends? Oh, this is an automated hello. Yes, indeed. I just pressed a button. Oh, hi, Jeff. Uh, from, from Brooklyn. Oh, wow. Must be early. Uh, yes, I pressed a button and it just wrote, hi, everybody. In fact, this is automated. I'm not doing a thing. I'm just pressing buttons. Uh, cool. <laughs> right. Let's, uh, let's talk about what I would like to show you today and what we would like to do in this stream. Um, right, first of all, get rid of that. And then I'm moving this window over here. And so I can see my notes. <laughs> uh, right, I would like to talk about automating Photoshop. And depending how much we can do today, maybe we'll do some more automation tomorrow. We'll see. Um, right. Okay, so let's, um, let's, let's just dive right in because why wait? I'm way too excited. All right. So as always, we are in Photoshop. And right now, I'm not even in the beta. We might jump into the beta later on. But for now, let's stick to the release version of Photoshop. So hopefully, everybody can play along at home. Right. Cool. Oh, hi, Doris. Hi, Carsten. Um, nice. All right. So why should we automate things in Photoshop and how can we do exactly that? Our main goal for today will be understanding actions and how we can trigger those actions efficiently and perhaps some ways for uh, us to automate batches, um, whole stacks of images so we don't have to go through them all individually. So let's start with the most basic building block of every automation, or almost every automation, the action. action. Um, okay, <laughs> I'll just pick any random Photoshop file, it doesn't really matter. And as you can see, I have already opened the actions panel. I'm just going to close my Slack because I don't want that right now. There you go. Um, I have already opened the action panel. If you don't see the action panel, then you might have just to go to the window menu and tap on actions. Sometimes it can be hidden behind this play button. Uh, if you like, you can also drag this here so we can close that. And then you have a panel that you can either dock or you can have floating, whatever you prefer. In this case, I would just keep it floating. It's fine. <laughs> we uh, For this stream, it's going to be just um, fine. All right. So let's have a closer look at this action panel. What is an action and how can we use them? As you can see, and it will be the same for you, there are already some default, -da -da -da, default actions in there. These were made by the Photoshop team. And we can have a quick look at them. It seems like there are folders, and we can twirl some menus. There are some icons here, some tick marks. What's happening? <laughs> What's going on? All right. So, actions are grouped in action sets. Or you can also call them groups. Officially, they're called sets. Uh, a set is essentially this folder. 
which allows you to organize your actions. Maybe you have an action specific, uh, spe specifically to deal with color. Maybe you have an action that only deals with adding watermarks. So now you can organize them into um, groups or as Photoshop calls them, sets. This is just an easy way for you to organize your actions if you have a lot of them in there. There are two ways to create new sets. Either you can just click this folder icon, create new set, or you can also go via the hamburger uh, menu and say new set. Both exactly the same. We can give it a name. Let's call them um, crash course actions. Click OK and we'll see a new folder or a new set uh, will be added to our actions. In here, in this new set, we can now define our very first action. And for our very first action, let's keep it simple. I would like to turn every image that I um, have into black and white. Why not? It's very basic. Or, or we, can, we can do anything else. How about perhaps not black and white? Let's um, turn images. Let's make them warm. Nice and warm. There you go. Remove all the blue content. <laughs> Great for viewing late at night. Get rid of that blue light. Okay. So I've now done that. But maybe I want to do this again for uh, more images. Or maybe I have a co more complex action. And I don't want to open an image. Go to image. Adjustments. Uh, where was it? Oh, photo filter. And then, oh, I have to remember exactly how much I did it. Uh, was it 70% or 71 I can't remember. Right. So, instead, let's undo that. Let's create an action. For that, I will click on the plus icon, or you can also go here and say new action. Let's just say plus, and let's call this one remove blue, or make warm, or whatever you want to call it. Let's zoom in so we can all see what's going on. Uh, so we have a name. Of course, we want it in the Crash Course Action Set. And here you can see why it can be beneficial to have different sets of actions. Uh, we could also amend it to the default actions, but I prefer having it here in the Crash Course one, so we can deal with that later. We can apply, or we can add a keyboard shortcut. Those are quite limited. Those are limited to only the function keys. You can see that here. However, <laughs> they actually go up to F19. Uh, why you would want F19? a very good question. We may uh, come back to that later, if you're interested. Because obviously, most keyboards, I don't know about you, most keyboards don't have uh, F19. But there are some tricks we can use. All right. So we could say like, oh, yes, I want F3 for that. And we can also say, oh, do we want Shift F3 or Command F3? Perhaps Shift F3. Why not? Maybe we are already using F3 for something else. So now it's Shift F3. All right, finally, if we like, and if we want to organize our actions, those will be very important uh, in a moment, we can also add a color. And for this, I guess if we want to make it more orange, why don't we add orange to this one? Now, instead of OK, there's a record button. And starting now, we need to pay attention uh, to what we're doing in Photoshop. So I will zoom out and say, Record. Two things have happened. First, we can see our new action is uh, in here with the correct keyboard shortcut. And we already see the record button has turned red. It was gray before. So, we're now, so, so now Photoshop is listening to everything um, what we're doing and recording those steps. So I would go to Image, Adjustments, Photo filter, let's say 70%, click OK. Done. You can see Photoshop has now recorded the photo filter. We can twirl that down. We can see exactly what Photoshop has recorded. Uh -huh, luminance, mm, interesting, uh -huh, density, uh -huh. there's our 70%. And now, since this is our very first action, I don't think we need to make it too complicated, we'll just stop the recording right away. We could keep going, and we will do that 
uh, for our next action, but for our first one, let's keep it simple. All right. So now we have our action. So what can we do with that now? Well, perhaps we could open a different image. Just put that here, new document, and look at that. There is our action. So let's select our action. We could either do the keyboard shortcut, Shift F3, or if we prefer, we can also click on the play button and whoop, it indeed replayed our action exactly the way we did it the first time. Much quicker than me having to go to uh, image, uh, adjustments, mm, photo filter. Oh, was it 70% or was it 75%? Oh, I think it was 70%. And then, okay. And which one did I pick again? Was it, uh, okay, I think you get the idea. <laughs> Much quicker. All right. Can we make that even more useful? I think so. First of all, you may have already spotted, I'm just going to undo that. You may have already spotted when I was on the hamburger icon that there was this cheeky uh, menu entry called button mode. Because I don't know about you, clicking here and then having to... Uh, 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 play. Uh, that's not. That's not very efficient. Let's try the button mode. Boop. And now all the actions which we previously had to scroll through manually are now replaced by <laughs> buttons. Who would have thought? And here's also where the color comes in. Remember, we selected the color orange, and now orange is indeed uh, coming up. And if we click on it, we just have to click once and immediately our action has been applied. Much easier. All right. So let's talk about uh, some more complex actions because, I mean, this is a very simple one. It's great. Sometimes we just need the simple actions. Why not? But maybe we want something that's actually more useful for us. So before we do that, I will actually have a quick look at the chat. I haven't been looking at the chat for... Why now? So, dee 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 dee. yes, our first action. I'm impressed. <laughs> Photoshop should add an Easter egg, a hamburger, all hamburger icons as a hamburger emoji. You just want a complete lunch. And Sean, in Photoshop, you can already have coffee, you can have toast, you can have banana. What else do you want? <laughs> um, my most used action, uh, Sandrine says, my most used action is the one that trims, makes the canvas square, and adds 10% to the canvas. Yes, exactly. And we will look at some of those more complex ones in a moment. Most laptops stop at F12. Um, <laughs> some keyboards stop at F13. Well, let's talk about that. All right. So, why does Photoshop allow you to go up to... F19. On some computers, I believe it even goes up to F24. Back in the day, there used to be um, keyboards that actually go up to F24. However, nowadays, usually, unlike, uh, unless you have a special keyboard, I think the Apple one actually goes up to F14, uh, but not the small one. So why does Photoshop go up to F19? The nice thing about um, uh, some keyboards like the Stream Deck, for example, is, or any other macro keyboard, you can define your very own uh, keys. So you can just type in launch F19. And most apps uh, are not using keys above F12 because most keyboards don't have keys above F12. So those um, F keys are usually unused because who in the world uses F17, right? So... I could take my Stream Deck or any other uh, macro keyboard and just um, say, oh yes, press the F17 or Shift F17 and then I just have one button and I have my actions. So if you have a macro keyboard, then you can try those um, keys above F12. Some other keyboards also allow you to remap keys. I know that there are also tools out there. If you're interested, you can look for Auto Hotkey. That's an app where you can reroute some uh, keyboards, uh, shortcuts. So yeah, quite useful. Right. Yes, uh, some tablets like the Wacom or the um, 
uh, uh, um, the Sense Labs ones also have external buttons where you can map them to anything you want. Quite useful. So yeah, if you have a keyboard like that, most people I've seen like the Stream Deck, I'm using one. Um, so yeah, that's why they're there. Cool. Now let's talk. Let's go back to the actions. Uh, get back to the action, and let's talk about um, some more advanced uh, features we could use. So I think for this, I'm just gonna get rid of the remove blue one for now. We can always bring that back later if we want. I've seen on. I'm not sure if you've watched the stream, but um, uh, Sophie Kitzmann. Uh, quite some time ago, always had an action where she um, took an image in and always applied the same adjustment layers for retouching. So why don't we try that? Why don't we see if we can create our own preset so it would be easier for us to retouch a photo? Let's see what we can do. So, as always, create a new action. Let's call that retouch template. Let's put that in the crash course actions. We could set the color, perhaps green, why not? Uh, we don't need a function key right now because we're going to only apply it once, so it's fine. And let's click record. Now, let's add some adjustment layers. Let's say uh, we often need, we want to dodge and burn. So, we could um, create a new adjustment layer, or let's do something else. Let's create a new layer. Let's fill that layer. So, shift and backspace to bring up the fill dialog. Fill that with 50% gray. And use the blending mode, either overlay or soft light. I often prefer soft light because it's more gentle. And click OK. Then, let's rename that layer Dodge and Burn. And you can see Photoshop is making notes uh, while we're working. All right. Maybe now... Um, oh, did I forget to set the blend mode of that layer? Must have forgotten that. Or why is it set to normal? That's not supposed to happen. Fill mode soft light. Hmm. Oh, well, doesn't matter. We can always set it here, too. Soft light. There we go. Doesn't really matter. <laughs> Should have done that, although. Uh, anyway. Uh, okay. And then let's add an adjustment layer. And why don't we use... Oh, I don't know. Perhaps a vibrance one. So we can target certain areas. Right? Let's call it vibrance. And let's invert that layer mask so it's off by default. And finally, let's add one empty layer, which we will call Make Edits Here. All right. And with that, we could group that if we want. But uh, should we? We can try. Group. And stop. Oh, I, I guess we could have renamed that group too. <laughs> too late. Uh, on this. Okay. Now we have it. <laughs> All right. So we now have recorded an action which automatically creates this group, adds our dodge and burn. So if we want, we can then use a brush, make things darker or brighten up the face if we want to. Let's make this just a bit darker. There we go. Add some shadows here, perhaps, and some highlights here. Well, it doesn't really matter. We're not retouching, we're just making, uh, creating actions. And now, of course, we want to um, uh, retouch something, so let's use the uh, spot healing tool, making sure to sample all layers. We can Perhaps remove this chalk, make it shorter. There we go. So we no longer have to create all the individual layers. Or maybe we want to 
increase the vibrance and make the face a bit more. Oop. Vibrant. There you go. And paint that in with the brush tool, of course. So before and after, just a bit more pop. There we go. All right. So whenever we now have a new image, can get rid of that again. We can just, I mean, we could go to button mode. I'm just going to go here, say whoop, edits, done. And we are ready to go. And I think you can all agree, this is much quicker than me having to go, all right, dodge and burn. Okay. What if we have an action and we want to just execute a single layer? Let's say, oh no, I have removed this one, this layer. Can I get that back? I don't want to replay the whole action. Why, yes, I can. I can just say, I can pick up wherever I want. So in this case, I could say, mm, I want exactly here. Hold down the command key, click play, and then it will go step by step. So if I click again, it will invert the layer. There you go. So if you ever want to only execute a certain uh, entry of an action, then you can always use the command key, hold that down or the control key on Windows and click through stepwise. You can also repeat that if you want, if you want, if you want another layer. There you go. Two clicks. Very easy. And yes, like Sandrine said, we can always go back, and that's exactly what I did when I forgot to name the group. I just went back to the action, said, yep, uh, record more, please. Uh, there we go. All right. Now, let's talk about some of uh, the icons we have here. We can see we have this toggle item on and off. I won't know what that does. And we have uh, this... Um, very interesting icon. For that, I will just quickly get rid of this again. And we, I guess we can create a new action for this. Let's say I want to get this image, I want to make it more dramatic, right? And of course, as we all know, dramatic means black and white. So let's create a new action, call that one drama. Click record and image uh, black and white. And now I'm not sure. Hmm. Should we use high contrast? Should we use darker? Hmm. Let's use maximum black for this one. Sure. But that would be different for every image. Maybe some images work better with this one. Can we somehow ask Photoshop to bring back this dialogue? Maybe. All right, I'm gonna click okay. And now let's just do something else. How about a camera raw filter? And let's add some grain to make it really dramatic. Size, roughness. All the grain, why not? There you go. Eh, yeah, fine. Okay. There you go. Now we have our dramatic image. <laughs> Very dramatic. I know. Um, cool. So, stop the recording. And now, let's just undo that real quick. And let's play that back. It works, certainly. But we didn't get the option to change the um, the filter or any of the options. If we, however, click here, toggle dialog, then you can see we get this dialog icon. And if I now play that back, Photoshop will launch that dialog wherever I have set um, this icon, right? In this case, black and white. And now I can actually decide, ooh, perhaps I actually want the red filter today, or maybe I do want the darker version. Maybe that's more like it, or maybe I want to adjust. Yeah, like that. P 
perfect. Or maybe I want to tint it today. Add some blue. And there we are. Click OK. And then the action will resume. And as we can all see, hopefully, add the grain back. So, in other words, whenever you want to um, make some changes, this could, for example, be very useful if you have a selection and you want to feather that by a certain amount of pixels, or maybe you want to expand a selection and you don't want to set that number as a fixed number, but you want to have the user be able to change anything. In that case, it's quite useful to add this um, dialog toggle. And I think we can all imagine what the other icon does over here. Yes, indeed, it enables or disables certain, step, st certain steps of an action. For example, let's say we have our retouch action and we don't want um, the mask to be inverted, right? In that case, I can just play that back. Oh, no, I, want, I don't want to create a new set. There you go. And now our mask, remember earlier it was black, now it's white because I disabled that step. And telling you that something has been disabled is this red uh, tick mark. Just so you know, ooh, maybe this action doesn't do what you exactly want it to do. Just keep an eye out. That's why it's red. If I bring that back, it's all good. Okay. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Dramatic is a toddler having a tantrum in the toys are in black and white with violins in the background. Oh no. <laughs> so that's a very vivid, uh, you have a very vivid imagination. Sounds like a prompt for Firefly, honestly. All right, let's see anything else in the chat. Yeah, it's, you can also duplicate actions. That's right. If you want, so you can. So here, uh, duplicate. You can also delete them. You can also play them. I don't know why you would play them from the menu, but you can. Sure. <laughs> um, so there you go. One more thing, which is quite useful. Um, you can change the way uh, actions are playing back in Photoshop. As you may have seen, if I create, uh, or if I play this action, it's pretty much instant. Right, all the layers are there. But maybe you actually want to see what's going on. That can sometimes be useful if you want to just make sure everything is going well, or maybe you're teaching something, and you want to show your students this is how the action works. In that case, we can change the playback speed of an action. Going here to playback options, and we can say either step by step. So by default, it's accelerated, which means it tries to do everything all at once. Uh, and this means, of course, sometimes the preview doesn't update until the very end. Or we can say step by step, or even we can define a pause if we want really slow. In this case, I will go step by step. So if I now play that back, we can see Photoshop is going and running this action and playing it back as we can see step by step, and we can see exactly what we're doing. And there we go. Sometimes... That can be quite useful. Hi, Yumacorn. Thanks for joining. All right. So, of course, I prefer having it um, in the accelerated mode because I don't want to sit here and watch Photoshop do uh, Photoshop things. So, why should it? Why should we? Cool. Now, let's, um, let's go a bit deeper into the actions. And let's, um, let's try something that's, at least for me, really useful, and this is called conditional actions. Because sometimes Photoshop, um, or sometimes we are opening images which aren't quite made for the action. What, are, what do I mean by that? Right. Let's just say, just gonna undo that real quick. Actually, we could just go back to F12. If you press F12, you always go back to the last saved uh, snapshot. In this case, we didn't save anything, so we're going back to the very first one. Um, also, a good way to automate. Uh, is anyone sometimes so proud of a particular action or script that they look at the work making itself while sitting comfortably in the hand, with their hand on the belly, 
is it, just, is it just me? Sandrine, I think we'll all have that feeling after I show you how to automate the actions even more. <laughs> uh, all right. So let's talk about uh, conditional actions, which can be very useful. For example, I often have, when I'm working with images, especially black and white ones, that the mode is set to grayscale. I'm just going to discard the color information for that. That's okay. Because, of course, we're losing color. And then, perhaps, I want an action where I want to tint some uh, photos. I have, imagine you're having old family photos, and you want just to add a splash of color to that. Maybe some color grading. Or maybe you want to... Um, Use the neural filters to uh, automatically recolor them. Maybe. Uh, in this case, we'll keep it very simple because we, wanna, we don't want to wait for the neural filters all the time. So I would like to add a splash of color to this image. Automated, of course. So let's go to image. And oh no. <laughs> hmm. Well, that didn't work. Why? Because we are in a black and white, in a grayscale document. We can't apply colors. So can we somehow fix that? Yes, we can change the mode to RGB color. But what if it already is in RGB color? We don't want to change it again and risk uh, converting anything we don't have to convert, right? That's where conditional actions come in. So let's create a new action. And let's call that... Um, I don't know. Make, no, add color. How about that? Add color. Let's make that blue. Why not? All right. So let's think about this. We start the action. If our image is in uh, RGB, then we can just add the color straight away. Or we can even make it black and white. How about that? Wouldn't that be cool? Yes, let's do that. Just thought of that. Didn't even plan it. All right. So let's say insert conditional. If the current document is in grayscale, or we can say if it's in RGB, it doesn't really matter. We can, let's just say if it's in grayscale, then we want to replay a new action. I will just leave it blank for now because we don't have a new action. So let's stop. So let's stop that. Create the new action. Call it convert to color. And we also need one which we'll just call uh, add tint. Right. Okay. Um, here we go. So, if our... Let's bring back the conditional. If our document is in grayscale, then we want to convert to color first. Right. So we can at the actual color um, adjustment layer. Click OK. Now, mode RGB color. Right? Um, now that we have it in color, we can add our um, photo filter or whatever we want to add. Let's say Hue saturation, why not? Uh, colorize. Let's stick to the blue, because why not? Click OK. And now we have our image colorized. All right, let's zoom that down so we can hopefully all see. Uh, 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 <laughs> Automation aspect gets lost somehow. Oh, OK, <laughs> different. OK, never mind. You're having a whole conversation on your own, apparently, <laughs> about fridges. Okay. Um, all right. Okay. So, 
what are we doing? I, just, I got distracted by the fridge conversation. Uh, <laughs> we're opening the image. <laughs> Whatever you want. Okay, Stefan. All right. We're opening the image. We're checking if it is in grayscale. And if it is in grayscale, then we are converting it to a RGB mode image, whatever you want to call it. So we can hopefully then apply the color. And if it already is in RGB, we just we can just skip that bit and we can go straight to the hue and saturation bit. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Of course, there are even more conditional action sets available. Let's say, whoop, there we go. We can check if the document is in landscape, for example. So perhaps we, um, uh, we want to crop something. Um, so if the document is in landscape, we don't have to crop it. Or perhaps if the document, um, if we're currently on an adjustment layers, we can do some uh, cool actions, for example, If we want to fill a layer with a color, then we of course need to check if the user has selected a layer we can actually fill first, because you can't fill adjustment layers, for example, right? So if we have a new action, for example, we just call that fill with green. And we just say green, play that back. Done, right? So we have a new layer. Play that back, fill with green. But this action wouldn't work on an adjustment layer. So let's say a vibrance adjustment layer, fill with green, doesn't work, right? So in this case, instead of having this, we would then say uh, insert conditional action. Say, is the layer actually a pixel layer? If it is, then we can perhaps create a new layer first. That could work, right? So we could create a um, new action called make new layer. Done, right? So now in here we can say conditional. If the current layer is a pixel layer, then do nothing, but if it's not, then make a new layer first. All right, let's try that out. Fill with green. Oh, the if should be, of course, here. My bad. Let's try that one more time. There we go, right? So quite simple. Photoshop has, has detected um, the layer we have currently selected is not, we can't fill that with green. So create a new one instead. And of course, if we are on a new layer already, it's not creating a new one. So that's um, hopefully, <laughs> perhaps that's an easier example to understand uh, the um, conditional ones, the conditional actions. So let's zoom in. If current layer is a pixel layer, do nothing else, play a different action, which is called make new layer, which just makes a layer, and then continue as normal. Okay, <laughs> that's conditional actions. Cool, let's now, actually let's get rid of all that. We can even get rid of the action set if we want. Yoink, and gone. It's a miracle healing holy substance water is on sale at the entrance of the lobby if you're interested. What's happening? <laughs> chat just being chat. Okay. Um, right. Now, we have our wonderful actions. But what can we do with them? We don't want to, if we have a stack of photos, for example, we don't want to sit here and click the, uh, open the photo, move it into Photoshop, Click on the button, close the document, open the new one, click on the button, open. That's like a whole lot of work. So let's automate that bit of work. Um, all right. So 
let's create a very basic action to make it really, really obvious that we have edited an image. In this case, I mean, we could go back to the drama one. <laughs> Why not? Drama, baby. Um, yeah, let's just make it black and white and add the drama back in. I like that. <laughs> um, black and white. Sure. And then filter camera raw. Let's bring back the grain, roughness, size, and of course some clarity. That's always good for drama and some dehaze and some texture. Sure, why not? I need to read the whole conversation. Yeah, I feel like I have to do that. But if I do that, Sandrine, I don't think we'll get anything done there today. <laughs> it's, it's just, yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. And of course, hue saturation, color. Let's make it green. Because why not? All right, done. We now have our drama action. And if we play that back, drama baby, there we go. It's very dramatic. All right, so let's automate that. And to do that, we have a couple of options which uh, Photoshop provides us with. The first one, perhaps the easiest one, is hidden in the automate, who would have thought, uh, in the automate uh, menu called batch. Opening that, it already presents us with a lovely dialogue, allowing us to play an action, in this case our drama baby one, and we can play that to a whole host of different files, hopefully all living in a folder. So let's, um, perhaps we have, I guess we could use this folder. Why not? I have a folder of, um, of lovely, lovely um, people from Adobe Live in here. Choose that. And now we have some options. Let's see if we need them. No, we don't need to override the open commands. We don't have an open command in our action. If we do, we may need to override it here, but we don't. Do we have subfolders? No, they're all living in the same folder. Do we have, we can suppress the open dialog just in case there are any color profiles. You can also disable that. If there are any errors, I hope there shouldn't be, but we can definitely just log them. We don't need to stop, I don't think, but or we can stop. Let's see if, we are, if there are any errors, there shouldn't be. And now we need to uh, specify where we want to save those files. In this case, can say either save and close, which means it saves to the same folder, or what I prefer is having a new folder just in case. So we can say new folder, call that output, because I don't want to override the current ones. Pick that one. And then lastly, we can specify the name. In this case, it just goes with a document name and the extension, in this case a PSD. However, if we prefer, we can also add some uh, serial numbers maybe, or we can change it, we can add a date. I'm not gonna do that because, yeah, I'm absolutely fine with this, but if you want, you can definitely go ahead and here. You can also change where the serial number starts, perhaps it should start at 1000. Doesn't matter for us. All right, click OK. And now Photoshop will go ahead and replay all the photos. You can see it's going through the images. And while it's doing that, we can navigate over to our output folder and we can see <coughs> Photoshop is creating all the very dramatic matrix-like photos, I guess. Green wasn't perhaps the best color to uh, show off the drama, but it's, it's very spooky. We can see they are all very grainy and very dramatic. And of course, your action can be much more complex. It could also add a watermark, perhaps. It could crop the image. It could resize it. It could convert it to a different format. Uh, you have the whole power of Photoshop. You can even generate something in the image. Perhaps 
you want to replace the background, right? Let's say you have the photos. Let's just use an example one. There you go. Let's get rid of that output folder one more time. Oop, delete that. Let's just use my image because why not? You could say new action, remove background, record that, select subject, invert, and of course unlock the layer, layer mask. Oh, I didn't need to invert that. I guess we can delete the inverse. Yeah, of course I don't need to invert that. If I do a layer mask, that's all right. Oh, we can just invert the layer mask. Ha <laughs> ha, invert that twice. All right. Perhaps we could want to also add a background if we want to. In this case, I'm happy with that. Stop. Close. Oh, actually, we don't need to close. We can just go back to the automate batch. Yep, remove background, that's one folder. Create a new one, call this one without background. Choose. Okay. Ooh, interesting. Don't show again. And now, hopefully, yes, there we go. The images no longer have a background. Very useful. Okay. Um, yeah. Just gonna stop that action. We don't need to do that for all the images. I think we can all see. We, we get the idea. Thanks, Photoshop. Right? There we have it. Lovely headshots without a background. And look at that hair. Isn't that amazing? All right. Get rid of that. Now, let's talk about some other ways we can automate something in Photoshop. Maybe, maybe we have already discovered while I was here in the automate uh, feature, the create droplet feature. This essentially will create an icon somewhere on your computer where you can take photos and drop them over that icon and it will automate automatically apply your action. In this case, you can see the dialog looks very similar to the one we already had. We want to save our droplets um, mm, well, sure on the desktop or maybe maybe in the hosts folder. Call that one uh, remove background. Uh, yes, that's all good. We don't need to change anything here. Yep, same folder, output, that's fine. Click OK. And now we should see, in this case it's in the host's document. There it is, a droplet called remove background.app. On Windows, it will be an exe file, just so you know. Right, you would think it would be e as easy as dragging and dropping. However, on the latest Mac uh, systems, uh, Mac OS, you will receive an error. Oh no, your file is damaged. Ah, what's happening? You can relax, it's all good. The reason for this is um, some scripts, like this one, change their code signature in the background and therefore macOS gets confused. But since we know that we created this droplet, we don't need to be scared. And to overwrite this, we have to do a quick trick. Command, uh, control clicking, I'm sorry, control clicking or right clicking and opening it once manually, right? Yes, I indeed want to open that. And then we can already close it right away. Don't need it anymore. And now Photoshop, oh, no, sorry, macOS understands, oh yes, this app is fine. We, I can open that. And now we can take the Photoshop document, drop that, and Photoshop will then go ahead 
as you can see, I'm not doing anything, no hands. Look, mom, no hands. Uh, and go through all the images. Oh. My bad. I should have waited. I shouldn't have touched anything. Well. Mm. Oh. Yeah, I guess. It, it tried to open the other images, we, which we already had. Yeah. Didn't like that. <laughs> okay. So, however, it did save. I'm not sure where it saved it to. But there it is. I think it saved it to the desktop. I forgot to specify the location. Oh, well, that's okay. All right. Cool. So you can create your very own droplets. For example, imagine you have um, you are setting something up for print and a certain printer always requires you to uh, change the um, the color profile. Oh, sorry, not this. Edit. Convert to profile. They always want uh, CMYK or anything like that. Then you can just create a droplet and take all your photos, all your folders, Drop it on that uh, icon and Photoshop will automatically convert your uh, images to whatever preset you've set here. You can pick any of them. doesn't really matter. Even a gray one, if you want. There we go. Quite useful. All right. There's also, and I think we should just at least mention it, in the scripts, uh, menu there's also oh, something called the image processor and this is very similar to the batch processing you can also load images with folders you can also save them wherever you want uh, but this um, allows you to save them in different formats if you prefer you can specify quality for the jpeg for example or you can even resize the image if you perhaps not to one pixel 100 pixels, I don't know. Doesn't really matter. Um, and, like I said, you can run the actions. So, we can go to our crash course actions, remove background. So, that's essentially the same, but has some more options here. So, it doesn't really matter which one you use. They both work the same, essentially. Image processor doesn't do uh, PNGs. I know. I know. But, Sandrine, you could save them as a PSD, <coughs> a PSD uh, and create an action that saves export, quick export as PNG. And there you have your PNGs, and you can just have that part as an action. And then, of course, in this case, you would need to, um, for example, in the batch processing, you need to uh, override the save as commands. That's warn you, like, when this option is on, files will be saved to the destination folder where only save as steps in the action, right? Exactly what we did, save as. Um, no files will be saved if you don't have this in your action. So that's how you could get around this PNG um, issue. I'm wondering if the image processor also has a uh, option to not save anything. I guess you can just untick that and have the save um, command in your action. So, there you go. All right. Cool. Then, let's talk about... What else do we have? Yes, 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 yes. Yes. All right. Okay. Let's talk about variables. That's really cool. Now, for now, we have automated uh, the actions. So anything we want to do in Photoshop, anything that can be done via the menus, via the filters, uh, we have automated. But sometimes, let's say you are working on um, a conference, perhaps, or you're creating business cards, and you have a thousand attendees, a thousand users, or individual people uh, to... Um, where you have to generate assets for. And you don't want to do that one by one. That wouldn't be quite 
the way to go. So, let's talk about variables and how they can help you to hopefully speed up your workflow. For this, I will just create a quick, I mean, it doesn't really matter. Let's create a blank document. Sure. We will create a quick um, mock-up of a of conference pass, maybe. I don't know. So we need a name. Let's make sure that's centered. There we go. And we need perhaps an ID. Of course, we need a photo. Let's make it round. And make sure it's in the center. Come on, there we go. Um, create a new layer. Fill that with any color. Create a new. Oops, sorry. Create a new selection. A rectangular one. This will be our photo. So let's just make that green. Clip that. Oh, clip that to our circle. And finally, perhaps we can add a rectangle here. And let's just call. Let's just do black. And one more, and we shall make this one red. Y will become hopefully obvious in just a moment. Okay. Uh, here we now have our very basic layout of our badge for the conference. Could be any conference, we don't know. Maybe one in London, probably not. <laughs> I don't think they would use this. Um, all right. Now, I would like to populate this badge automatically with um, the details of the attendees. So let's call this one photo. Call this one employee. Maybe the employees have a red badge at the top instead of a black one like this. Uh, I think Tim's just stopped reading chat. I mean, <laughs> no, no, but you're talking about fridges and slaying dragons and, uh, yeah, and substance materials. A jack disc is a bit of an extreme response. Um, I know, I don't know. Sandrine likes the badge from Bridge. Okay. Yeah, that's also an option. You can also uh, toggle this badge processing straight from Bridge. This one. That works. Okay, there we go. <laughs> we only have half an hour left. And I really want to show you this because it's cool. Right. Okay. Um, right. How can we bring in uh, now the data to automate this creation of these? I mean, I think you can all agree, fine looking badge. To do this, I shall go to image, variables, and first we have to define some variables, obviously. Photoshop, because, uh, because Photoshop now has to know what we would like to replace in this document. Maybe we have a background image we don't want to replace. So Photoshop should know exactly what we would like to change. In here, we now are able to select the layers in this case, for example, employee, or let's start with a name, keep it simple, and we can change should it be. Uh, so what do we want to change uh, with this layer? In this case, of course, we don't want to change the visibility. It should be visible at all times because we want the name there, but we want to replace the text. And for this, I will just call this variable name. All right. Then what else? We want to change the ID. Yes, also the text, so ID. And we want to change the photo. In this case, we don't want, it's not a text replacement, it's a pixel one. So let's call this one photo. 
the method, uh, how the photos will fit in this case, I think we will try to fill, which looks like this. You can see that down here. I can't move my cursor off, but look here. Yeah, because we don't always know the aspect ratio of the photo, so we want to make sure it fills the frame. We could also stretch it if we want, but people's faces usually shouldn't be stretched, so we'll try to fill it. We can align it if we want, but I think center align is our best option here. So let's keep it like that. Uh, what else? Oh yes, the employee. The red banner should only be visible, so visibility, if the person is employed by the company. So visibility, employee. All right. And with that, I think we have defined all the important bits we want to change. So now, I can say next. And now it's time to import the data set. <laughs> conform who wants to conform. Yeah, right, Oliver? I agree. All right. Luckily, I have already prepared. Oh, look at that. Luckily, I've already prepared a, um, a, a quick document, a quick spreadsheet of some of the uh, people I want uh, the conference to, uh, I want the, uh, yeah, some people I want to have at my conference, my Adobe Mini, perhaps, let's call it. Yeah, whatever. Um, and as you can see, I've strategically created some uh, table headers with the same variable names as the ones I've used in my um, variables here. You can see, if I go back to define, employee is also called employee. That's very important. Otherwise, it won't work. Now, going to the spreadsheet. It's just a Google Doc, nothing fancy. Um, I have the name. I have my ID. I have the photo in this case, since I will be saving this to the same folder, it's enough to just uh, add the um, file name. If it's in a different folder, you may need to um, go to your operating system and um, get the info and copy the, um, copy the file path like this. You may need to do that. But since we're, we will be using this in the same folder, actually it will be this one, um, I will save this to this PSD folder. I don't need to be concerned with the whole path to this folder. It's fine. All right. And uh, lastly, the visibility will be toggled by true and false. So if it's false, layer won't be visible if it's set to true. In this case, Maddie happens to be an employee. Um, in this case, yes, we can set it. So let's create one more um, set just to see, so you can see how that would be done. Uh, in this case, I've noticed we are missing Emma. So let's add Emma. Of course, she's number one, as we all know. Let's check the file name. It should be emma.psd. Emma.psd. Of course, she is an employee. And there we go. Right, let's save this. So download. This might be different if you're working with Excel perhaps or a different spreadsheet um, app. In my case, it's just as easy as download. And I want either a text file, so txt, or a comma separated value file, a CSV. CSV is gonna be, and I shall make sure to drop that into the folder. There we go. We could rename it, just call it data. All right. Now that we have our data ready, we can import. So, data sets, import, can select the file. In this case, it should be the sync folder, automation, hosts, PSD, and there it is. Open. Encoding, yes, automatic, that should be all fine. We don't want to use the first column for dataset names. And if we have already loaded data, we want to replace it. In this case, we don't have any datasets previously loaded. So I could uncheck this, but it's fine. 
And there we go. Now Photoshop has loaded the uh, data set. And here we can already see, yes, uh, we have the ID, one, two, three, four, five, six, should match the one in our document, Frank, one, two, three, four, five, six, sure enough. Frank.psd, you can see it has found my file. If I actually make that bigger, we can see it has the whole file name, uh, whole file structure. It found the correct layer and the um, correct uh, variable. And Frank, of course, is not an employee, so the layer will be invisible. If we want to preview that, just tap the preview button here, and then we can actually just, oh, sorry, no, this one. We can cycle through all the different, there you go, now it's red because Mally is, of course, an employee. Melanie, Pauline, Robert, Rufus, yours truly. And so on, and finally, hopefully, Emma, hey. All right, so, Imagine you have not only, in this case, I think we have about 12. Yep, 12. Imagine you have 1,200 or 12,000, I guess. We can all agree, much easier. <laughs> um, I do have to say, this is quite a basic layout. I'm sure you can all spend much more time, be more intricate. You could say, for example, um, what's the main app this person likes to use and you can use maybe the, some app icons or what's their favorite color and then you can toggle the visibility of the layers depending on that and furthermore nobody's stopping you from adding some logic into this spreadsheet first so you could say like if someone if this could be data from a form you got back and someone typed in what's your favorite color and it's green then you can say if this, oh, sorry, if this equals green, then true, otherwise false. Oops, sorry, no. True, false. Right. So then green, because Photoshop will need a variable name. And if they say, oh no, it's blue, then it would be false. So you could set up like blue, red, what's your favorite color, green, blue, or red? And then you can convert the response from the form into true and false here and go with it that way. And then of course, you can export that again. So you have all the automation of your spreadsheet app and all the automation of Photoshop combined for magic. Is there a similar way for Illustrator? Oh, great for SKUs and barcodes also. Yeah, of course. I mean, there are also apps that automatically convert barcodes. I believe Excel also has some scripts where you can convert that, but don't quote me on that. Um, Tony should have his own color. I agree. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah, it's a similar way in Illustrator. I definitely know there's a way in InDesign. And I think Illustrator might have that, but I'm not 100% sure. One way to find out, try it for yourself. Um, can I combine red and blue to have purple? I guess you could just... Uh, I haven't tried that yet. Let's, let's try it out. Let's say... Just hide this, fill this one with blue. We could set this perhaps to 50%. I'm not sure if that actually should work. Now it's purple. So, imi uh, yeah, image, define. Of course, I didn't save it now. <laughs> we have to do it again. That's all right. We just do the one here. Define, visibility. Uh, employee, next, import, yep, still the same, mm, too many variables, oh, oh, fine, I apparently need to define all the variables, lesson learned, okay, uh, employee, and uh, 
photo, pixel replacement, photo. I really should have saved that one. Oh, well. <laughs> ID, text replacement. I'm just redoing what we did just a moment ago. Name, text replacement, name. All right. Let's try that again. There we go. Now Photoshop is happy. It has recognized uh, recognized all the um, variables. So let's see if it works. Blue, 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 purple. There you go. So if you want to combine red and blue in this case, you could just set the opacity to this to 50%. Oh, oh hi there, two. Very interesting. Mm-hmm. 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 Cool. Bye-bye. <laughs> uh, all right. Going back to uh, Photoshop. How can we export this now? <laughs> um, we can say, okay. And this will then save all the instances of this, of these badges, to the folder, in theory. Should do that. Have I done something wrong? Oh no. Oh, no, all good, all good. Forgot one step. We need to automate that. And uh, where was it? I think it was somewhere here. Variables. Am I missing something? Hang on. It should say something about variables here. Export. Datasets. There it is. Okay. It was under export. Whew. That's what you get for only using the German version of Photoshop. There you go. All right. It was there after all. Okay. Dataset as files. There we go. We can now select the folder. Let's create a new folder, call that badges. Create, choose all data sets. Yes, in this case, we have 12. We want to export all of them. We can, again, specify the name if we want to. That's OK. If we, of course, had a set name for those data sets, then we could um, perhaps just use some more. I think we should be able to um, add an ID. Yeah, we can add the data set number if we wanted to. That's okay. In this case, PSD, <laughs> or big PSD, small PSD is fine. Um, and double checking, yep, 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 looks good. We don't want a compatibility, that's fine. Mac OS is okay for now. Click OK, double check the correct location. Yes, and now Photoshop. We'll actually export that. Badges. There they are. Yeah, it sometimes gets confusing. I was like, why, why is it not there? It should be under automate. No, it's under export. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes even I get confused. Oh, well. All right. So we can see. Oh, yeah, the preview doesn't like the PSD. This should be um, this should be purple. Interesting. The thumbnail is correct. Look at that. It's blue. But if I if I open it in preview, oh yeah, apparently it doesn't like like the layers. That's okay. We can just open it in Photoshop, and it should be there. You go. Fine. Oh, and apparently Maddie's photo is too uh, too narrow to fit. She shouldn't be. Shouldn't happen. It should scale it up. Oh, maybe I've done something wrong. Photoshop, I'm sure it's me. I'm sure it's me who've done something wrong. It's not you, Photoshop. Photoshop is always right, as we know. Um, of course, we could be cheeky and write a quick action to crop something automatically. Hmm. Could we do that? Maybe. Uh, all right. So we can see all the badges are there and we can double check the numbers. Yep, that's right. And of course, since... These ones are blue. Let's open the one with Joe. The employee, since we set the, uh, this one to 50%, it's purple, it should be really red. 
but I've changed it because Oliver was, was curious. Uh, all right. Now, let's close that again. So, just step back. What did we do to uh, get to this result? Because I th maybe it was a bit confusing at first. First, we have created the layout with any image in this case. I can use the one with Emma, doesn't really matter. I made sure to name the layers so I can find them later. The name, does, it doesn't have to be name in all capitals, we can also say anything else. Um, then we created or we defined the data set using the variables. Define. We've selected all the layers. You can see the ones where we have applied a data set. They have an asterisk next to them. We've set what we want to change. We imported the data set, which we have created using ex an external tool like Google Docs or Microsoft Excel or Open, uh, Open Docs, Open Office or LibreOffice or whatever. In here, we made sure to use the same variable names as the ones we have named here. So in this case, employee has to match employee. The, the number, as we just found out, also has to be the same. Um, then I have filled that document with some random data. ID doesn't matter. I could just right, doesn't matter. I have added the photo in this case as a file name. Remember, if they are saved in a different location, if they're not in the same folder, then you need to um, add the full file path to this one here. Uh, bop, 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 bop. I have saved this as a CSV. Text files also work. I have imported this file. Boink. And then clicked. OK, file, export, data, set as, data sets as files. And there we go. All right. And then we have, finally, our lovely images. And if we actually, if we don't want PSDs, remember, we could only export them as PSDs. We can always go back to the batch processor or no, perhaps not the batch processor, actually the image processor, my bad, and save that as a JPEG, perhaps, or as anything else we want, of course, using actions, using the save as, and then we can save it. All right, you could pull employee information out of a central directory into a CSV and then use it with Photoshop to generate badges. Yes, of course, where this data is coming from, in this case, I've just manually added that in. This could be um, a form that people can submit. You could ask uh, perhaps uh, the administrators of your company to give you a CSV with all the relevant information. Of course, please make sure to uh, <laughs> include only the ones you really need. Perhaps social security numbers shouldn't be in here. Uh, but yeah, where this data is actually coming from, it doesn't matter. You could, for example, if um, you don't want to copy the path all the time, let's let's just say uh, get info. We have this path here. This is actually on a different machine. That's why it's looking a bit weird. Right? I could take this path and just remove the last bit here. Then have a list.psd, and then you could just concatenate. I think you can just say plus, but don't quote me on that. No, I think there's a concatenate, right? Concat, yes, concatenate two values. This one, uh, oh, no, comma, that one. And there you go. Now you only need to... Um, set this path once and then you can just do this i can just copy this one here and also bring it down so i don't have to copy all the paths uh, individually right you can see now 
we have the complete path with the uh, Photoshop document. Much easier. Of course, please um, do remember <laughs> to only uh, export these ones. So you could either say um, like uh, copy a bit of that and then paste this one as values only, right? Because uh, we don't want any additional data just hanging around here. Photoshop will probably get confused by that. So if, if you do any automation, make sure to uh, remove any, um, any data you actually don't need anymore. All right. Okay. Uh, do, 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 do. Yes, answers to security questions, credit cards, PIN numbers, normal stuff. Um, I presume there is a version of this workflow with the online headless like they did with InDesign. That's a very good point. Right now, I guess we are almost at the end, so I'm not going to do it today, but tomorrow we can have a look at something called Project Aspen. Right now it's for some reason still in German, so I want to figure out how to uh, set that to English so we could all see what's happening tomorrow, but for some reason it's still in German. However, spoiler alert, there is also something very similar to this, uh, what we actually did just now. So perhaps we will have a look at Project Aspen tomorrow um, in the next automation crash course. I don't want to do it in the next eight minutes. Um, and there are some other features which are quite cool. Is there a stream tomorrow? It's not in the behind schedule. Really? Do, 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 do. Tomorrow. Oh yeah, well, that's odd. Okay, just double checking. Yes, there should be a stream tomorrow. Well, I'm certainly going to be here. That's odd. All right. Uh, yes, I will certainly double check uh, for tomorrow. There should be one. Okay. In this case, I think we can have one last, one last look. Just close all that. Because there's one cool feature which I haven't shown you. And I think we're just going to use my image for that. Get rid of the mask. Delete. Because in the Actions folder, or in the Actions panel, there is one uh, option called Allow Tool Recording, which is quite useful because whenever I want to... Um, mask something just gonna remove this action let's say I can also get rid of this one <laughs> don't need that anymore let's say I want to create a new one and we'll call that mask this um, select subject right and now I always want to change this mask. Like maybe I want to paint something in here. Wouldn't it be great if I could also uh, record this, right? Change the brush, go to the uh, soft white brush, there you go, and then use default colors, default, default colors. This is exactly what the allow tool recording option does. Once selected, you can use uh, select different tool presets and Photoshop will then record that. So if I'm perhaps, let's just get rid of that again, delete, I play that back, mask this, you can see Photoshop has automatically selected my brush tool. We are on the mask and now we can go ahead and start painting. Perhaps with a different opacity though. Should have recorded that as well. There we go. Can make changes to our mask. Quite useful. Um, do, 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 do. I would first need to know how to properly learn Excel. <laughs> uh, I don't think we can do a crash course on that. This seems a bit far away from the Adobe tools. Maybe you need to <laughs> check uh, an Excel crash course somewhere else. I'm sure there are some. All right. And with that, I think that's all the time we have for today because while we do, we could talk about um, 
uh, panorama imports uh, and exports. We could talk about um, the generative fill because there's a cool action where we can um, increase the quality of our generative fill. Uh, and of course, Project Aspen, which I've just mentioned. But I feel like this should be uh, saved for tomorrow, same time. So, just got into Project Aspen. I know, it's quite cool. So I will talk to you all about Project Aspen and uh, panoramas and perhaps even layer stacks. And um, what else? Oh, yes. Whatever I wanted to say. Oh, yes, a generative fill improving the quality of generative film. Uh, tomorrow, same time, same place, here on Behance. For now, thanks very much for watching and for posting questions in the chat and talking about fridges and dinosaurs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sometimes the chat is... Just, chat is just being chat. All right. All right. I'm going to have lunch now. I hope you'll do the same. Until tomorrow... As always, any questions, let me know. And hopefully you've understood a thing or two. <laughs> I certainly tried. Um, so yeah, same time tomorrow. And uh, bye for now.